Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 15 of our Project Architect 2 Let's Play series. A little bit longer of an episode today, um, but we're taking care of a mob farm. Uh, we got some computer issues going on and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's dive on into it. What do you call a crowd of chess players bragging about their wins in a hotel lobby? Chestnuts boasting in an open foyer. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful day here in the world of... Ooh, my back, apparently, in the world of uh, the Andrada, where today, well, we're working on um, stuff and things. We've got a, a mob farm that we're going to work on getting ourselves set up uh, and start, you know, farming for essentially my goal is farming for dimlets from RF tools so we can start working on going into different dimensions uh, and really ramp up our EMC production and uh, all of that good stuff. So, yeah, let's dive on into it. So uh, in between episodes, I did uh, a little bit of work. First things first, I made myself a matter receiver and a charged porter. Got tired of having to uh, slash home to get home. Um, the matter receiver is a fantastic little mod, just requires some power um, or a fantastic piece of kit. You name it, you can give it public access or whatever. Then you build yourself a charged porter, which is um, a uh, charged porter upgraded to an advanced porter. Um, basically allows it to store more destinations and everything. Um, but you come over here and you can shift right click on this after you already uh, named it. And then bam, you can teleport. And then if you shift right click again, you can change your destinations. I kind of just have the one for now, but it's very convenient to be able to come just right back home and then have access to all of my other portals uh, right here. So I made that because I got tired of bouncing back and forth. I also moved our quarry prior to this. Our quarry was here. Um, I don't know where it was mining. The way that I had it set up was not efficient at all. And I ended up getting a feral flare lantern mined up, um, which tells me that it was mining somewhere that I have been. And I didn't like that. So I immediately stopped it. I, I still have not been able to find where it was. Luckily, it seems like it was like in the village here, um, but like below ground. So it mined up one of the tens of feral flare lanterns that i placed around our village um so there's that it's not really a big super big deal i have not seen that it caused any problems on anything um so we're good to go there but i did move it out to um it, right outside of our village over yonder our village is right over there and i just moved it over to here um, and i programmed it to mine uh, so what i did this time was i uh selected this block with the um quarry thing the the, the sh shape card selected this block and then i dug myself all the way down to bedrock and i selected that block so that way it has all 64 to whatever's down there 64 uh negative 64 as its dimensions and then i just set it to 512 512 so you can see here um, if I open the GUI, we have 512, 512, and 127 blocks is what it is. Um, but it's got an offset of negative 67. Honestly, that was the easier way to get this set up. Um, I also switched out our power for it to a flux point that is throttled to do 25,000 RF per tick. Um, and it is currently, it, it says 25,000, but the buffer, or the output is only 20,000, which is interesting. I guess this the builder can only input 20,000 RF at a time. Good to know. So we'll just let it sit at 20,000 then. Um, but we're going to set that priority. We're going to go negative one. This is lowest priority for power. If anything else needs power first, give it to it, then the builder. Um, so yeah, the builder is currently operating at chunk 47 out of 1,089 that it's going to mine out. Um, and it's just it's doing its thing and having more power is great. Uh, one of the big reasons that I did this was amethyst. I figure our builder, if it has 1,089 chunks to mine, I guarantee it should run across amethyst at some point. So if we take a look into here, it did. We ran across an am uh, a geode. So we have the amethyst we've been waiting for. We also ended up with calcite too. Uh, so we're going to grab both of those and we're going to teach them to our transmutation table. And now we have amethyst and calcite, both of which we needed for um, different setups. Now you're going to notice here that I have some pipes running um, from each of these barrels because the hopper upgrades are not fast enough. I did upgrade this to an advanced hopper so that it can push out to the sides. The advanced hopper can push in any direction, uh, but it's not fast enough to keep up with this. I also don't need this anymore. We can burn all of the calcite and the amethyst um 
But yeah, it, it was not fast enough, so I had to set up pipes. Um, I did have mechanism logistics cables, um, but the problem that I had with those is that I couldn't filter them, and I needed to filter out. Don't let it pull calcite and amethyst. Uh, so I had to do that. Granted, I could have probably done my filter upgrade and then blocked calcite and amethyst from being able to come into here, but I didn't think about that at the time. Um, but yeah, anyway, oh, and for some reason we have an iron helmet. Where did that come from? That's weird. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is operating. You can see how fast it is. It actually starts to back stuff this. Um, and we have 20 uh, magenta matters that we've had um, come into the system. In between episodes, I also did go ahead and tear up uh, as high as I could with our different versions of fuel and matter. If we take a look at it, I think this is Project Expansion. Uh, we can get different types of matter, which is going to determine which EMC links we can get. And then I guess alchemical chests, but I don't necessarily think I need those, do I? I don't know what I would need those for. Also notice they all have the same amount of EMC. Oh, uh, they're just different colors. Um, but yeah, so we're going to need uh, these in order to, I think we need the white EMC links. Or no, it's just basics. Okay, the Architron is the most expensive portion of that transmutation interface. Um, but I tiered up so that way we can get at least to, I think it's the violet tier of EMC link that we have. Um, and we're going to see what we need to do with that. But I, I tiered up anyway, just so that we could um, get to that point. And I should working on making these climb stars too, or teaching the system how to do it. But um, yeah, is what it is. So anyway, that's what I did in between episodes. The main thing was getting that amethyst. That that really helped us out a lot. Um, so what I would like to do today is work on setting ourselves up a nice nifty mob farm, utilizing mob grinding utilities here. Mob grinding utils. Tried and true, fantastic mod, works great for killing mobs because uh, as you can see there in line number three, mobs mashed do count as player kills. Um, so mobs mashed count as me killing them, which means we get experience and we get all of the drops. And again, my major focus here is gonna be on the dimlets. Uh, so that way we can get into RF tools and start exploring different dimensions. Because one of the quests that we have here for our adventure bound is to visit the other dimensions. Yes, this one. Uh, we have to get four common dimensional essence, which means that we have to go and kill some of the common blobs that we find in other dimensions. They're slimes that are found in the other dimensions. I need to make a singularity. I need to make a charged snowball. I need to make a glacial staff and a quantum entangler porter, all things that I could probably actually get done. Um, the matter condenser... I guess I have integrated dynamics, so I could do the whole water and sink thing. Uh, I need a charge snowball. We can make that happen. A glacial staff. We'll figure that part out later. And a quantum entangler porter. We should probably teach the system how to do. Um, so we can honestly get into this first portion, the goat trophy that we need in order to get the amalgamation, which is going to lead us to the archimete. Now that we have the calcite, too, we can start working on this process and pulling these things out um, from an EMC link and start compressing these. These ones need cooked, the gold and the iron. So we're going to have to pull the raw ore and then cook them. Um, but everything else is just literally pull it out and put it into like a compacting drawer until it can compact up to the highest tier that it can until we're done, essentially. Um so there's that. And then the other ones are exploration, which we're going to get into uh, here very soon. It does say that I have a few quests available to me. So let's go ahead and collect those and see what did we end up getting. Uh, we got a efficiency. Oh, I like that it shows the cooldown amount, the tooltip there, because uh, that has not always been there. Uh, but there we got a card overclocker, and that was pretty much it. Okay, so uh, but we still have another quest to complete. Okay, and that gave us a pipe upgrade. Okay, cool. Uh, so for our mob farm, I would like to go ahead um, and get this set up. Now, I have chosen a location for this. Unfortunately, it does have to be out of our um, uh, purview, out of our village, because I have our village completely lit up, um, and I don't know where I placed uh, feral flare lanterns. So I do did need to set up at a different mob farm um, or a different village over yonder away from this area now this is not terribly too far from our base i actually love this village by the way this village is massive like look at all of these places look it's got a little trading post down there it's got like two churches you know because there's so many people living in here they need two churches we've got all kinds of stuff like this village is great we got some stables and stuff uh maybe the mayor's house over here like 
these big villages, this is how Minecraft's villages should be, just saying. Um, but it's not, and that's okay. So anyway, what I would like to do is go ahead and work on getting this set up. I would like to sleep through this night, though, because A, rain, and B, it makes it easier for everybody to be able to see. So we can go ahead and do that. Um, I don't have access to you, so let's go ahead and throw you in there. I guess I didn't know poppy bushes anyway. Um, one thing I should work on is getting the dimension. I think that's going to require... not. It's the dimension card. It's the infinity booster, isn't it? Yeah, the infinity... That's... There's an infinite booster. That's dimensional. No. Well, we'll find it. There's a uh, thing that allows you to access your refined storage, or I'm sorry, your AE2 uh, everywhere. Infinite range. Maybe it's infinite. Maybe I range. No. Infinite range. Nope. What are you? Infinite storage disk. That doesn't help me. You are infinite fluid storage. Okay, well, uh, I can't find it. I'll look around later and puts around in there. Anyway, so I decided I want this house to be our house for our um, mob farm. Okay, um, really weird there. My whole computer literally just crashed. Uh, so apologies for that. Uh, abrupt cut. Don't know what happened there. I also don't know what I ended up leaving off at because I ended up back here at uh, home, which is not where we ended up last. Uh, so let's go. Let's pop over. I know I already looked. Uh, I learned the amethyst. So we have that going for us. I also like to put just some of these into our uh, system here. Um, so I don't think we're terribly too far back from where we left off. Um, let's pop over to our mob farm. And see, yeah, okay. I think we're okay. Um, I think did I learn the poppy? Poppy. No, I did not learn the poppy bush. So that's basically where we ended up at. Uh, is we just rewound about three minutes. It looks like or so. Anyway, uh, so we have cool looking village. Great, awesome, yada yada yada. We discussed that. I wish it was not raining. It's also uh, sunrise, so we're gonna have to deal with the rain, uh, which is great for encoding. Um, anyway, so we're gonna utilize this space for our mob farm. And you might be thinking, the Andrada, that's pretty darn small, like uh, one, two, three, four, five by three, so fifteen total blocks or so. Um, not very large. However, you may have noticed in my inventory that we have cog blocks and a redstone clock. Despite the fact that we have a very small area here, we are going to be able to make a very powerful um, mob farm uh, that spawns mobs super quick and is good for us. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to we have a couple tasks. First things we need to do is replace all of this stuff with dirt. So we're going to have to go ahead and grab all of this cobblestone and replace it with dirt. Now, eventually, we are going to have to get ourselves um, our cursed earth, but we'll deal with that uh, in a few minutes when the time comes. It shouldn't be terribly too difficult, other than the fact that we have to find a chicken. Uh, but I think I found an egg, so in our transmutation table, I should be able to, um, you know, pull out a whole bunch of eggs and get a chicken really easily. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw this back in here. And bam. Okay, so now we have our dirts going on. So what we're going to do, uh, I, I already pre-prepped all of this stuff, as you can see here. Um, but we have our mob masher. The mob masher is the main block that's going to do all of the work for us. This mean looking machine, uh, well, mashes all of the mobs. It literally deletes and destroys mobs. Um, spins around. Pretty cool. Don't end up getting yourself into it because you will end up dying as well. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, we may want to go ahead and grab ourselves a lever. Our lever is in here. Yes. OK, we can grab ourselves a lever and then we can pop it over here and then we can turn it on. You can see my masher is running and then we can turn it off, which will also open and close the door, which is not ideal. But the door is going to get replaced with glass anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so the mob masher um, is going to run. It also has the ability to get upgrades. So we can get sharpness and looting specifically. There is also a beheading upgrade that you can get if you would like to get, um, you know, more damage to those kind of mobs. There are other upgrades too. Uh, we can get uh, fire, lighting mobs on fire. We can get smite. We can get up arthropods. Um, and I think 
yeah, that's it. So we can do more damage to certain enemies. But looting and sharpness is the two that I went with. Looting is super simple to make. Blue dye, gold nuggets, and redstone dust gets you looting, and you can put 10 of those into there. Um, and then sharpness is also super simple to make. It's just iron swords. So we got those going on. So we have our mob masher running with max upgrades on sharpness and with looting. On top of that, we're also going to need to get ourselves set up so that when mobs spawn in here, they get pushed around and they can get uh, put where they need to be. And it is not here that I want to put this. It is right in the center. So right in the middle here, I'm going to go ahead and place myself a fan. Same thing on the other side. And then one right in the middle. And with these fans, what they do when they receive power is push mobs in this direction. You're going to notice that we kind of don't have anything going on over here and over here. So we do need to fix that, which is where these width upgrades come in. Um, I did make a couple of them. So now you're going to see that expanded the width plus one on each side. So now it encompasses this whole direction. And this fan is going to push all the way over to here. So we need something to counteract that. We need this one to push um that way so now this whole area is encompassed by fans once these two turn on it should push all entities right here into the middle and we can test that by grabbing ourselves some more levers uh we'll grab a total of three of these because we're going to need them anyway and we'll pop these on here turn you on and turn you on and if i go in here i should get pushed are they canceling each other out or are they not going to push me Interesting. We're actually going to have to see how if that works correctly. Huh, they're canceling each other out. That's not good. Great, now I'm stuck. Uh, hmm. Yeah, see, it now I'm getting pushed. I can't go in there. And if I go in here, it's going to whoop, push me through. Um, but it looks like the two fans cancel each other out, which is not what I want. Maybe. Maybe we need to set up something like uh, vector plates and then put fans. Now, the fans do get blocked by a block in the middle. So if I put the fans, you know what, let's do that. OK, so let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's rework this. We're going to put the fans here. They will get blocked by the um, mob masher. So that's going to stop this from doing any uh, anything going forward, which means we can use those upgrades then. Uh, so we can put our width upgrade in and show the area, which now is not going to cover the whole thing. And it's going to cover some of this outside, which is not really ideal, but it's going to work. We'll make it work for us. Uh, let's break you. Because now if I go ahead and put the width upgrade in here, if I end up coming in this block, which means that we're going to have to get a couple extra width upgrades for this fan so that it can go out. So we're going to need a, a two by width upgrade. So if I come in here and I grab width, I can grab one more. And theoretically, this should make it work. You're going to notice I have a, a waystone for a trials chamber that I found, too. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but this should now cover this entire area and push them into there. OK, cool. So now, in theory, if I grab my levers and I place them. Around. It should push into the mob masher. If I, I can't even get in there. Um, if I drop through the ceiling. Yeah, it's pushing. It's literally pushing straight there. OK, good. So this this should work. This should work perfectly fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn those off. And that's that's basically the the, the, the core setup of our mob farm. This is what's going to handle all the all the death and destruction portion of our mob farm. So these guys are going to push this way, this way. This guy's going to push that way. So anything that spawns in this area is going to get it's either going to get pushed over here into these fans, which will push it into the middle. Or it's, if it spawns here, it just immediately gets pushed. So everything's going this way and this way into the mob masher, which is great. Uh, so that is all of that. We do need to go ahead and get rid of these glass panes so that way we can make this a dark room. Um, I do have this white terracotta. I guess we could just leave the white terracotta or do we want to put uh, tinted glass so that way we can see 
we can see what's going on, but it stays dark inside of here. So if I do this, now it should be uh, oh, almost pitch black. Okay, it is pitch black down here. We have some light bleed going on, but it's not um, detrimental to our setup here. Okay, so if we go ahead and break these, now we can, you know, have some light. So we only have mobs spawning over there. And then we can see inside of here. Hello, dead mobs. Okay, so that takes care of that. The other thing that we're going to want to get is um, some way to get the items out from there. We're also going to want an ender inhibitor. Let's go ahead and not forget that. This guy is going to stop Enderman from being able to... Um, teleport within its range and it is currently active i don't know if that needs to be on the inside or the outside so we're just going to leave it there and see what happens um we also want to get um i guess i don't need all that tinted glass anymore so luckily it's emcable which is how i have so much we're going to need to get our items moving and everything but let's go ahead and work on getting ourselves um the actual mobs spawning in so in order to do that ah you know what i didn't grab my experience crystal that's where we left off so in order to get the mobs to spawn in, we need a couple things. We need our experience crystal. This is going to store the experience for us. But we need a couple buckets. So let's grab some buckets. And specifically, I'm going to need four total buckets because I need to make myself some cursed earth. Um, and so in order to do so, I have to make myself some cursed chicken feed. Yes, I'm going to feed a chicken some cursed seeds. Interesting that all my... Stuff turned back on. That was just weird. I don't know what that crash was, but it was a crash for sure. Um, anyway, so with these buckets of essence that we have here, we should be able to make ourselves some GM chicken feed. Um, I just need to grab myself some spider eyes. And some seeds. Are seeds in here? Sure, pumpkin seeds will work. And we can go ahead and grab ourselves GM chicken cursed feed. Or GM chicken feed cursed. Uh, now we just need to grab ourselves some eggs and then uh, get ourselves. Oh, hello. Well, you're here. OK, that was you jerk. He learned that that would open that door. Did you see that? That was actually pretty smart. He walked past it opened and then he came back. Eat. Eat the seeds, grow faster so I can convert you and explode you. Or I mean, uh, turn you into an hour, uh, you know, use you for all my nefarious purposes. Eat up. I know you're hungry. Okay, that's as many as he's going to eat. So he should convert over here in a few seconds. I do love the look of this chicken. I love his little thing on the top. I don't know what that's called. Bam, there we go. Uh, and now I just take this and I feed the chicken. He explodes into some feathers. But the important part is that he exploded into a rotten egg. And the rotten egg is what we are here for. The rotten egg is going to be what allows us to spawn mobs in. So if I come into here uh, and I use this rotten egg on this dirt, it's going to turn it into cursed dirt. Uh, the important thing, though, is that it is there like dark ethereal glass. That would be nice. Ethereal glass. Hinted ethereal glass. Yeah, I want this stuff. Give me a moment. Let's pop back home really quick. Tinted glass. Uh, the tinted glass is dark, which is what we want, but we want to make, make it so that we can walk through it. So that's glass surrounded by amethyst. Luckily, now we have amethyst available to us. Uh, so I should actually just be able to craft this. If I do this, and we're going to teach the system that now anyway. But I'll grab those back. And then I should be able to do this, which gets me the tinted ethereal. We can go ahead and teach that. Shove that into there, and now this is not solid to players. So that makes it so I can go in and out of my mob farm without having to um, break the blocks or anything. So I can just walk through this glass, but entities, mobs cannot. Uh, so inside of here, if I go ahead and utilize my rotten egg, it's going to convert all that over to dreadful dirt. Get out. Jeez Louise, that was close. Uh, probably should go ahead and chunk load this uh, just to be safe. That way... Uh, they can't get, you know, uh, creepers can't do their thing. But you can see there, the mob masher did its thing. So if I turn this on, I turn this on, and I turn this on, all those mobs should start ending up getting mashed. They're all going to end up there in the mashinator and then immediately die. And you can see we're getting stuff spawning in. Uh, now, one thing that we'd probably want to do is go ahead and get ourselves... <sighs> Slimes are the annoying part. 
because they can spawn outside of the room. That's I have to. I think I need to set signs up or something on here. Um, one thing that we should probably go ahead and do is head on home, grab ourselves a, which I think is actually EMCable, so I didn't really need to head home. Um, but we'll grab ourselves a. Um, man, we got a lot of stuff. Hang on, I gotta teach the system some stuff. That was a lot that we got out of that. Okay, um, we're gonna grab ourselves a redstone lamp and our a lever. And that'll allow us to turn this thing on and off because the light is what controls our mob farm. You don't want to expose it to sun. If you expose it to sun, it will get destroyed. So don't expose it to sun. But if you use a redstone lamp, you can turn off the cursed earth. Uh, don't go in there, by the way. You will die. Uh, turn that off in case I do need to go in there. But anyway, okay, so cool. We have our mobs spawning in. That was our major goal. Uh, so now what we need to do is last step is to get those things taken care of. And look, we already got a dimlet. Uh, that is a trials chambers dimlet. So if we make a dimension utilizing this, um, we will get uh, trials chambers all over the place is what that sounds like to me. That's actually pretty darn ridiculously overpowered. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, red hearts. Cool. So we need to take care of a few things from this mob farm. Uh, most of the stuff that we have coming into this is going to be EMCable, and we're going to have it go into um, a matter condenser or energy condenser uh, and do its thing. Right. We're just going to have it go into there and, you know, bam, uh, the ender inhibitor broke. Oh, because I have I have that. OK. Go ahead and kill that guy. I need to I need to shut all this off. Is there like a wireless redstone where I can like I know there's the create redstone links. I guess I could do that to be able to turn all this off at once. Um, something we can look into, uh, but we'll put the ender inhibitor back there so they can't teleport. Uh, but what we want to do is go ahead and get ourselves set up with an absorption hopper. So we'll go ahead and pop this guy. Um, let's say. I guess really, ideally, we kind of have this set up kind of ugly um what the trans linked redstone link what is your cost brass casing do i have brass casings i think i have it would be very nice to get these i'll be right back okay so uh what we have going on here is a redstone links uh from create fantastic piece of kit here allows you to wirelessly control redstone or send redstone signals. So I currently have a program to be spider eye. Spider eye is our frequency. You can change that to any item that you have. Um, so I have a redstone link here. That is the transmitter. And then around the base, I have receivers. Um, you can tell they're a receiver because they have this little antenna on there and you get it to be a receiver by smacking it with your um, create wrench. Um, but so I have those all around and I have one underneath our mob masher. So now for, with one button, I can actually go ahead and turn everything on or turn it off. Super simple. Uh, the only thing I don't have controlled with that is our redstone because I'd have to have a knot gate set up here and I just don't feel like dealing with it. So that the redstone lamp, I just have to manually turn that one on and off and it's not that big a deal. So I got two levers to control our setup here. So yeah, anyway. Uh, so with that, what we want to do is go ahead and get ourselves set up with an absorption hopper. The absorption hopper is going to be the main block that sucks up all of the items and the experience from our farm. Uh, so the absorption hopper has a fairly large area that it can operate on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shift that back. I want to shift it um, in the Y a little bit, I think. Oh, you know what? Actually, I need to go just south. OK, so we're going to go south and I think that should move it. Uh, nope, that was the wrong way. OK, so we're going to go plus towards the south. OK, so this is towards north. That's south. Negative is towards the north. Uh, that way it encompasses the whole building. And I think that should be pretty good. Let's go ahead and shift it to the east a little bit. Nope, the west. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, I think that should work. So now the absorption hopper is going to absorb any items that come into here. It has an internal inventory of fluids and liquids. So if I turn this on and I turn this off as mobs spawn in, um, let's go. Spawn in. There we go. Something spawned in. But you're going to see it's going to pick up their items and it's going to pick up the experience that gets spawned in from them, uh, which is exactly what we want. 
So with that, I have a couple things that I need to get set up. Um, I need to filter out. I need to um, set up uh, a way to get all of the items to go into, uh, say, this netherite barrel. Now, why did I place this right in front of my door? How am I supposed to get into there? Let's let's be smart about this, the Andrada. Place it over, let's say here, because it can f literally go anywhere. Okay, fences are great, but they're in my way. Uh, this can go here. Now I just got to fix its area again. So I need to shift it um, this way. No, that was fine. Uh, let's shift it to the north. That's what I wanted. Nope, south again. Okay. Something like that. Sure, it's good enough for now. Uh, let's go over one other way. So plus one, bam, hide area, good. Okay, so now it'll pick up everything that's in that area. So what I wanna do is go ahead and I'm gonna put a barrel up here, netherite barrel. Uh, this barrel has a very large inventory. Um, we're gonna put hopper upgrades um, and I think mm, we'll have to see how else we want to do anything else. Um, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna have the absorption hopper and in the up, it's going to push items. So items are gonna go up into there. Now, with the Absorption Hopper, we should also, in theory, be able to set up our Experience Crystal um, and tell it to ab absorb items into... Ah, that ended up over here. Or put the Experience directly into the Experience Crystal. So if I say on the west, go ahead and put Fluids, Fluids should end up into here. Uh, let's put all of our Experience, and let's go ahead and let this turn on and run and see if it works. Come on. Okay, so we got something there. Uh, this is empty, and we have slightly more experience. I'm going to go ahead. 226 buckets is what we have there. Um, and now we have still 226, but it's empty. And that's what I want to see, is that it stays empty. Okay, cool. So that means I experience is going into this crystal, and it's being stored. And then we can even pull this out into um, a fluid drawer or something like that if we wanted to for all of this experience. So we have items coming up here into the netherite barrel. Um, and then from there, I want to filter out a couple things. I want to have most of this stuff end up going into an energy condenser. Um, however, with the energy condenser, I don't want... Well, I guess, honestly, I don't know why I wouldn't want just pretty much everything to go into there. The only thing I wouldn't want, um, which I guess we can go ahead back home and make really quick... Uh, is armors. I don't care about any of the armors. So I want a void upgrade. Um, I've made a few of these, but let's go ahead and just, I need to teach the system how to do this. We're utilizing these barrels a lot more in this series um, because, well, their functionality has increased. Wrong one. This one. So I want these two. I also probably want, no, I don't think I need a filter upgrade, do I? I don't think so. Oh, look, you can see also we used one whole column of our assembly chandelier. Um, but I want a void upgrade, and what I want it to do is void out any armors that we end up coming into our system. So it'll avoid armors, but then things like dimlets and stuff won't. Make sense? And then everything else can go into our matter condenser here, um, which I need to actually move up to here. Okay, so matter condenser. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a hopper upgrade. Now the hopper upgrade is going to push items to the left, and you can see it's... I don't know. Oh, it's trying to push. It's pushing down and then pushing back. That's not what I want. Let's clear this out. Okay, let's clear this out. So what I want is to push items out to the left hand side uh, into our matter condenser. And then the matter condenser is going to be set up with, let's say, um, matter. What kind of matter do we want? You know what? I'd rather just have all this go into an EMC link, to be honest with you. Uh, and I think I actually did set all that up to have that happen, didn't I? I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, but we'll have it go up to, sure, cyan matter. That's fine. 500 million RF or EMC. So it's going to take a long time before that happens. But when that does happen, we can have it pump into a ender chest here and then go into our EMC link. That's great. So anyway, any items that come into here now are going to go over to there, except for, honestly, the only things that shouldn't go into there are going to be anything that has no EMC, which is going to be quite a lot of things. Um, but we can go ahead and we can say, okay, we're going to um, allow 
works in the GUI, um, and we're going to say, okay, I want, uh, for example, I know that we're going to get backpacks, right? Backpacks is something that we are going to get. So we can go ahead and say Curios back. Maybe ours elemental Curio bag item. Eh, whatever. I know backpacks are going to come in from some skeletons that spawn in. Um, let's go ahead and grab, uh, what about swords? What kind of tags do you have? You have uh, Minecraft swords. I don't want swords. We'll get rid of swords. What about you? Is there a tools? Look, forge tools. Perfect. We'll grab tools. Now any tools will get automatically voided. If I grab my armor, I can go ahead and pop one of these into here. I can say, hey, I want forge armors. All armors get removed. Perfect. Uh, that should cover a good majority. Bows. I don't want bows. Bows are very easy to clog up the system. So we're going to go ahead and say forge bows. Get rid of those. Done. So now anything that ends up not being that should come into there, right? So if it's not um, EMCable, it's not going to end up into here. And if it is EMCable, it'll just get voided. Or the things that I don't want, like that bow, just got voided. Um, like oak planks and stuff, I don't need those, but I'm not going to shove them into there because that's just going to cause problems. Okay, I think that we have this pretty well set up. Anything that's EMCable is going to go into here. The only other major thing that we need to take care of is this is slow, right? Like, come on, why is it going so slow? Well, we can solve that problem, actually. Um, and that is our final step to getting this thing perfected. Uh, we can go ahead and pop underneath here to all of our dreadful dirt, okay? So I want to go ahead under and clear out this space underneath here that houses our dreadful dirt. I think that's the end, right? Yeah, okay. So we can go ahead and put this silt coarse dirt there. Bam. So what we can do now is take these cog blocks that we have from supplementaries. These guys will pass a redstone signal uh, through them, which is great uh, because we're going to utilize that mechanic to pulse our dreadful dirt. Yes, we're going to pulse it with a redstone signal because every time our dreadful dirt gets pulsed, it's going to uh, trigger a new spawn, which means that we can get this to operate very, very fast. Slime is going to be a problem, and it always is. I wish I could just say, no no slime spawning here for me. Okay, so we don't want that one because that's got the redstone link on it. But this should theoretically do it. Uh, so if I go ahead and I take my redstone clock and I put it here, and I say, hey, you're always on. I want you to tick very fast. I want you to be ticking as fast as you absolutely possibly can. You're going to see all these cog blocks are ticking, which means that we should have tons. Oh, yeah, look at that. So many mobs that we have an entity. It looks like we have a cramming issue where entities are popping out of there. Okay. So maybe that's a little too fast. Honestly, our space is a little small. Um, I maybe should set up, I think if I put buttons or something on these, it would stop the slimes from being able to pop out. Am I correct in that assessment? Uh, I hope so. But anyway, so look at all this. We're already at 150 some odd thousand. Um, and look at all this extra stuff that does not have EMC. Honestly, we need to go ahead and get rid of the advanced hopper because it's not going to be fast enough. Um, but our farm works great. So in between episodes, I'm going to work on optimizing that. I'm going to put buttons here. Maybe that would stop the um, slimes from spawning. Um, we're also going to take care of this. We're going to make this faster. The hopper isn't fast enough. So I'll go ahead and get a pipe set up. Um, and I'll probably just move the matter condenser up top then. Get a pipe set up that can pull instantly through this, essentially. Um, everything that needed voided got voided. Uh, and if I can look through here and I can see, do I have anything? Nope. But what we're getting from this is a couple things. First, we're getting these miniature red hearts. These are great for increasing our heart content. Uh, we're going to start getting knowledge, um, common and uncommon and all the different types, and apparently sugar. So we don't, we honestly don't need sugar. So we can go ahead and say, hey, I want to avoid sugar as well. Um, just sugar. That's fine. So go ahead and do that. 
We'll keep these and then we'll keep an eye on it and see what else keeps spawning in. But my goal is these dimlets. Those are what I want is the dimlets and they come from Endermen. They are rare um, and then there's rarities within what the dimlets do. Uh, but yeah, that's our that's our goal is to get those dimlets going. So anyway, let's get out of here because this area is raining and it's just driving me crazy. This episode's going to be about 30 gigs in size uh, because of all that rain. Uh, but anyway, that's it for today's episode. So if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. Tips, tricks, suggestions, all that good stuff. Drop them in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and optimize that farm a little bit. Uh, I have some weird lag going on right now. I don't know what what's that about. Um, we'll see what is happening. My computer's been acting weird. As you know, I crashed earlier. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Thank you.